Hello everyone, welcome to the sixth lecture in the series of literature globalization. Uh, in today's lecture we will talk about the Swallows of Kabul. It is written by Yasmina Hadira. In this lecture, first of all, I would introduce the novel for you. Secondly, I will talk about its characters. Thirdly, we will talk about themes, motives and symbols in the novel. Introduction. From brutal battle with Soviet troops to the rise of Taliban theocracy, to the American invasion in the wake of 9-11, Afghanistan has become a potent symbol of political and religious reality shaping the landscape of the 21st century. The Swallows of Kabul puts a human face on the horrors and repressions of that war-torn country. It tells the story of the two couples, Mohsin and Zunair Rahman, born into the privileged classes of pre-Taliban Afghanistan, and the prison guard Ati Shokat and his, his wife Musarat, raised in poverty and drowned into a jihad in hopes of bettering their lot in life. Mohsen once hoped for a career as a diplomat, but now he aimlessly wanders the devastated streets of Kabul. On one such random outing, he comes upon the stoning of an adulteress and finds himself joining the frenzied crowd. The next day, Zunaira, anxious to satisfy her husband Gil and her own shock, give up to his request to accompany him to the marketplace, the first outing she has made in months but the Borka she hides behind cannot protect them from the harassment of zealous Taliban soldiers and their marriage, already frayed by Mohsen, act of violence, collapses under the strain of new resentment and suspicions. The shadow of Taliban darkens the lives of Atik and Musarat as well, worn out by years of war and deprivation. Mosara is slowly give away to an incurable illness and a tick to despair which corrodes his faith in mullahs and threatens to destroy his soul. The Swallows of Kabul carries us into a land of mind-numbing fears and harrowing hardships and reveals the possibilities for love and compassion that rumble beneath the surface. Let me talk about the background of the Swallows of Kabul. The Swallows of Kabul is a novel written by Yasmina Hadira. It published in 2002 and is set in Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan. When the Taliban was in charge there, there are two main couples in the novel. The first couple is Mohsin, a formerly wealthy shopkeeper that has had his family's business destroyed by Taliban, and his wife Zunaira, who is not only beautiful, but also intelligent. Zunaira used to be a teacher, but now under the rule of Taliban, she has to cover her face in public and has had to give up her job and cannot leave the house without an escort. The second couple is on the other sides of the social spectrum. A tick is a prison guard who has been converted by Taliban and his wife is named Musarat and is dying from loss of her health and hope. In the novel, every action, every character makes seems to be connected in some way and the theme of Fate and predestination is evident in the plot. In each of their lives, the characters experience violence, love and survival that is all described to be the part of their destinies. In addition, Hadira incorporates important details about Islamic fundamentalism and how complex the Muslim world truly is. 
Let me talk about the characters in the Swallows of Kabul. Atik Shaukat. Atik is the first character we meet in the novel, and his constant discontent and anger sets the tones for the rest of the book. He works as a jailer and so sees the effects of the Taliban regime on a daily basis. He is a supporter of the Taliban but is beginning to second-guess his feelings. His wife, Masarat, is very sick, probably terminally. He is becoming a man of violence and is certainly becoming immune to it. He finds himself constantly angry and abusive of others but cannot understand why. Atik falls in love at the first sight with Zanera and loves her more than life. He would literally do anything for her and unearths a, a passion within himself that he never realized was there. He is driven almost mad by his longing for her. And this ultimately leads to his death. When, unable to find her, he begins to randomly rip the whales from the faces of women in the street and is beaten to death for it. Musarat Shokat Musarat is Atik's wife and is so sick that he has forgotten how to love her. He feels only resentment and having to take care of her. Masarad nevertheless loves her husband and when she realizes that he has fallen in love with someone else, devises a plan that will let him escape with his new love. She knows that she is dying anyway and sacrifices herself for waiting to be executed in Zunera's place. She is a selfless and loving woman who is far nicer to her husband than he deserves. Mohsin Ramad. Mohsin is against Taliban, although he does not make this position public. He, too, has become immune to violence that goes on around him, and one day, on seeing a prostitute being stoned to death in the market square, picks up a rock and throws it, joining in her execution. He doesn't know why he has done this, and once he, his anxiety subsides, is ashamed. His wife, Zanera, is beautiful. They used to have an easy marriage, but the negative changes that Taliban rule has imposed on them are starting to take their toll on their relationship. Mohsin's want a simple existence with the woman he loves and tries to be romantic but cannot seems to be. Mohsin is becoming less able to control his temper and strike his wife during an argument. He is killed when he trips and hits his head on the wall, breaking his neck. His wife is blamed for his death. Zunera Ramad There is a breathtaking beauty about Zunera. Although now she has forced to wear a burqa by oppressive Taliban regime. Nobody really gets to see it anymore. She adds the new regime and the changes it has made to her life. Zanera used to be a teacher, but she's not allowed to teach anymore. She hates wearing the burqa. She hates that she is not allowed to hold her husband's hand in public. And we see an example of the oppression as she walks with her husband and is hit in the face for speaking in public. Zunera is found guilty for her husband's murder, despite the fact that she was defending herself. Kasim. Kasim is used to live in Kabul as a child, but left and has not seen his family for years. He is an old war buddy of Atik's. He is a party line man when it comes to the politics and he has no respect for women, whom he considers calculating and full of dishonesty. He believes that it is irrelevant if a woman is killed or beaten because women feel no pain and therefore the pain inflicted on them doesn't matter.
let me talk about the themes in the Swallows of Kabul. Hatred is one of the themes in the novel. Atik experiences serious emotions that he doesn't quite understand. Sometimes he finds himself indulging violent fantasies, and he's quite the pessimist. As a chronically afflicted person, he, his mental health doesn't have a steady foundation of a normal happy life. He doesn't know anything except the hatred that comes from his own private mental suffering, without a way to understand why he suffers so extremely. He begins to treat the universe as his scapegoat, and he becomes openly hateful towards others, obviously full of hypocrisy, because he constantly possession himself as a moral authority and judge of his community. He even stones a woman to death. Murder is another theme. Murder is a logical conclusion of hatred. As we learn from Atik, he kills a prostitute in a public stoning, showing his zeal for religious extremism. One doesn't have to be Jesus Christ to see that this behavior is obviously evil. His willingness to commit murder had nothing to do with this religion. It was just his hat at finding a method to express itself. He manifests violence because he is full of anger and regret. Terrorism is another theme in the novel. Because of the constant hatred and violence in Kabul, there is a lingering paranoia in the community, making everyone frantic and aware. Then, acts of terrorism are done and they instill horror into the community. Terrorism is therefore seen thematically as the use of hatred as a tool. Terrorism can be seen as the obvious conclusions of the willingness to murder, because that is the precise fear that they terrorize their community with. On this slide, let's talk about the analysis of the swallows of Kabul. From a literary point of view, the Taliban could be likened to other hateful organizations like Nazi Party. Now, because of the psychological principle or group think, the community can support itself, provoking each other to more extreme point of view until as a group. They are so full of rage that they become willing to execute their hatred in real life. By committing murders and act of terror in the name of God, these hateful bigots also clarify another fear in community. Perhaps when bad things happen, that is God punishing us. Isn't it that what terrorism implies? Therefore, terrorism represents a kind of hateful religious judgment because the anger is so wrathful and inflamed that they wrong, wrongly believe they are perfectly correct. One could liken this state of rage to the human mode of warfare. A man in the battlefield might run and scream and murder, and it would not be beneficial for them to wonder while this is happening whether they should slow down and reconsider. That might cause their death if they are being shot at or something. So these terrorists can thought of as at war. But who is their war really against? Who are they really trying to punish by committing murders? Thus, we see the central irony of this novel. The terrorists are primarily hateful of the god they presume to serve because they are taking life out of the reality which they profess openly that he created. By killing humans, they have taken their stance against life and whoever created it. Let me talk about the symbols, allegory, and motives in the Swallows of Kabul. The anti-prophet, 
Instead of being a servant of God like Muhammad, peace be upon him, the prophet, this Muslim man becomes immensely hateful and ignorant. If Muhammad represents divine clarity and oneness with the creator of life, then terrorism is the opposite. Because Atik and his associates are closed off to new information, and they pigeonhole themselves in feelings of indulgent victimhood. One other motive is anti-Muslim. Clearly, Islam is a religious specifically suited to making citizens who can support their community during trying times. Islam commands sacrifices in contributions and service. It also orders charity and sacrificial love. So, for these people to murder a girl in cold blood for sexual shame, that is using one verse to break the others. Instead of a help to his community, he kills a marginalized woman without any attempt to try her for her crimes or to seek the men who also participated. The actual death. Many people threw stones, but Atik knows for sure that he hit her and killed her by splitting her skull open with a projectile. Atik is violent and dangerous because he is effective and legitimately powerful. That's what the reader learns from this detail. Atik is a main character for this reason. Because the reader is examining the logic of the murderer. The murder symbolizes Atik's predicament because he has judged another human life as if he were God in the name of God, and technically no, no one knows what awaits mankind after death. Atik seems to believe in hell. The Taliban The Taliban represent hateful agendas, which draws an angry and emotionally marginalized people. The congregations of violence is dangerous because they can promote each other towards more extreme behavior than they would do alone. The effect of Taliban is that, if not for all other people throwing stones, Atik's actions would be clearly murderous. The murderous community makes Atik feel insulated from the consequences of his actions. Cocaine Although Atik is so committed to sexual purity that he, that he murders a prostitute in a fit of godlike anger and delusion, he also then turns around and sells cocaine, introducing chemical dependency into his own community. This is a symbol that he is not really committed to, an ethical standard. In another words, the religious zeal was just a tool he used to earn permission to commit murder. But he has no real passion for his faith. Or else he wouldn't allow his community to suffer by his own hand. Let's talk about the irony in the swallows of carbon. The first irony is the irony of hatred. The hatred seems like something is so wrong with other people that a thief can't help but hate them. But actually, something is wrong in his own private understanding of reality. He can't help but feel like is, he is always the victim of fate. And this is the true ironic origin of his irony. Although he commits a murder in the name of God, he is clearly mad at his understanding of God. Or else, why the pessimism? The irony of community. Although a community typically represents level-headedness and the willingness to hear other point of view, this novel shows the Taliban as the ironic opposite, or 
inverse to real community because they all agree no diversity. They just inflame their pre-existing ideas. They provoke each other to do violence. The irony of murder. There is no true belief at the bottom of ethnic violence. In the name of God, he executes his understanding of justice against someone he feels absolutely disgust about. Therefore, he indulges in the most horrid, disgusting behavior of all. Murder by way of religious hypocrisy, he chooses to instate his own hatred as the standard for life and death. The irony of prostitution. Although some passages in the Quran and the Bible make explicit commandments about the prostitution and those caught in the act, those books are also written by men, and they do also include commandments about supporting one's community. No doubt, the prostitution in Kaaba represent a chronic injustice against women, but the men see nothing wrong with their hatred. The irony of terrorism. The sad truth about terrorism is that it is a violence for violence sake. Why do evil? Typically to get what a person wants. They might do evil, but this terrorist community constantly do evil for the sake of damaging others. Out of a position of victimhood, as if they are finally getting vengeance against their community. But they are the problem of their community, not the victims. Let me give you some assignments in the end. Question 1. Scholarly elaborate on the themes, motifs, irony and symbols in the swallows of Kabul. Question 2. What message does the swallows of Kabul has for the developing world? And that is how we come to the end of this short lecture. I'll talk to you next week. Bye for now.